This is the wiring diagram from my ebook that you can download from my All American 5 Radio YouTube channel. Now, this is quite a complex wiring diagram, but if you take it small pieces at a time, you'll find out that you'll be able to figure out how this works. Here's an example here. These are tank circuits used in this radio. They all work the same way and perform the same function. When I first get a radio, the first thing I do is to ohm out all the coils in the radio. If they all check good, then I'll replace all the wax caps and the electrolytics in the power supply. Then I'll bring up the power supply slowly, very carefully, checking the voltages in the radio. And usually with the documentation that goes along with the wiring diagram, this information is supplied by the manufacturer and is very important information because if something is not correct usually you'll be able to detect what part of the radio has the problem by seeing which section or maybe which tube has the wrong value usually the plate voltage of course the bias voltage for the tubes are very important and here I am showing the bias path for the control grids of each tube. Now each grid of course has a DC bias on it but what I want you to note is how and where the DC bias comes from. Now if we start all the way at V1, the control grid there, you can follow the blue line through the resistor, the 1 meg ohm resistor, then over to the right where it says AVC and then up to another label of AVC and then through a 2.2 .2 ohm resistor. That is the AVC supply, DC supply. Now if we go to V2, the control grid there, you can see that it's getting its bias from R19 and it goes to ground. Notice that it doesn't go through the capacitor. All of the bias for all the grids will be supplied through a resistor or through a coil or maybe a wire directly to ground but never through a capacitor. Now if we go to 3V here the DC bias is supplied again it's coming from the AVC circuit but it's going through the secondary of the IF but it's a DC voltage. Now if we go to V4 we can see the grids there the DC bias are supplied by R11 and R12 and if we move to V5 and V6 well the DC bias there is R13 and R15 and for V6 is R18 this DC bias is 
supplied to the grids so that the tubes can function properly. Now in my ebook, we go into great detail on all this information, including the audio amplifier, the IF section, the oscillator and converter section, the RF amplifier, and the tuned antenna circuit. We also take a look at the iTube. Now in this radio, that iTube could be taken out of the radio completely and the radio would still function. This is strictly an indicator. Also, in my ebook, we go through the signal flow through the radio, starting at the left here. The station signal comes in through the antenna, and we, we have this switch to A, and it goes through the primary coil of the antenna coils. Now what that does is it radiates the magnetic field to these three other coils, and the A1 is the one that we're switched to, so the signal comes out of that tuned tank circuit up and to the grid of the RF amplifier. Then the output from the plate goes down to the primary of the RF coils that are also tuned tank circuits. And again, we have it set to A. So the output of the A secondary goes up to the grid of the next tube, which is our mixer, our converter, oscillator. Now the signal from the oscillator goes up to the same tube and gets mixed together with that amplified station signal. And lots of frequencies are developed. There's four major lobes, but we're going to be taking the difference between the oscillator signal and the station signal and that's going to work out to be our 455 intermediate frequency. It gets sent over to our first IF, which is another tuned tank circuit. It, that 455 signal will pass through very easily, and it goes to the grid of the next tube, gets amplified, and sent over to two more tank circuits where the next step is it's going to get detected. Okay, the secondary of this IF transformer gets rectified by the plate and cathode of V3 that's over here at the left. And the other side of the coil goes down to the switch. But you'll notice that I've got two capacitors. They're Pico Ferry capacitors highlighted in blue. What that does is it drains off the unwanted RF, in this case, 455 signal. And those two capacitors in that resistor R7 actually make up an RF pi filter, getting rid of the unwanted 
RF and what we have left is our audio. Now this audio signal will continue through the switch, through the volume control, and up to an audio amplifier and inverter. And at this point, I should mention that at every stage of amplification, the phase of the signal has changed 180 degrees. And I haven't mentioned it till now because it doesn't really matter until we get past this point. And it only matters here because we have a push-pull output circuit. And the signal that drives the output tubes must be 180 degrees out of phase. So the output of this tube does go over to the grid of V5. But also there's a little bit of the signal that is picked off and it goes over to the grid, the first grid of V4. Now when it gets amplified it is 180 degrees out of phase and it gets sent down to the grid of V6. So now the grid of V6 and V5 are driven 180 degrees out of phase. Well of course the tube again when it amplifies will also for each signal put them 180 degrees out of phase shown here like this, the important thing is at the ends of each of the audio transformer is 180 degrees out of phase from the center tap. So being 180 degrees out of phase, that's how this circuit gets its name push-pull. When one tube is said to be pushing, the other one is pulling, and vice versa. This was a very quick overview of this wiring diagram, and of course I go into much greater detail in my ebook, and also much greater detail and how to troubleshoot. Thanks for watching.